moose lover here. Just sitting down on a log. Waiting maybe see if I can see a moose here in this spot. And uh, when you're out in the woods, you um, see a lot of things. You know, make you think a lot. And uh, you look at this tree right here. This tree stump next to me. I'm looking at it. And I would say I'm no tree expert. I would say that tree is probably, it probably lived to be, I don't know, 400 years maybe. I don't know. Um, it's like, uh, it's almost three feet in diameter. So I'm figuring if it lived to be, and it, it's dead, it's, this is a stump, and here's the rest of it. Here it is. It's a great big massive piece of dead wood. Another piece of it over there. And then you think it probably has laid here for a long time. And it's really rotten. It's got, you know, funguses all over it. It's pretty soft in places. Um, so let's say it's been dead for 50 years, 100 years, I don't know how long it, it's pretty rotten. So if you say the tree was 400, and I might be exaggerating a bit, but I would imagine it would have 300 or 400 rings, I don't know, raged a tree. But if it was a hundred years ago that it died, and then another 300 that it lived, 2000, 19, 18, 17, was a little tiny seedling in the 1600s? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're there? So this tree could see, although maybe they can, I don't know. Maybe they see in their own way. It'd be pretty dismal to be a tree and not be able to see the other trees around you, or at least sense them, wouldn't it? Like I said, you think about a lot of stuff when you're out in the woods. Deep stuff. But, if this tree could talk, I imagine it would have some stories to tell about the things it could see or sense. Uh, all the animals walked in front of it over the years. All the storms it saw. All the sunsets. Sunrises. Yeah. One tree and several billion, trillion trees in New Brunswick. And this here is its tombstone. Died after a long life, fairly uneventful. One big crash in the night. And now it's just here feeding all the other little insects and critters. And Nobody knows anything about it except itself. I'm the only one that noticed this tree, probably. And I'm the only one telling its story. So, uh, after doing some research there, I uh, determined it was probably more like 200 years old uh, when it was uh, in its prime. And uh, then it began to have the limbs gradually die off one by one until all the nutrients stopped flowing to its leaves. This would have taken a few years. Then it stood as dead wood for possibly, what, another 50 years? Then it came crashing down and has been probably decomposing on the ground for another, perhaps, 50 years. So that would put 
its seedling birth year somewhere around the early 1700s, perhaps. Very interesting and amazing. Just where does the time go? I believe that judging from the bumpy bark surface that this is a beech tree, so for many, many years it produced beech nuts in the fall that helped many wildlife species through the cold winters. Squirrels, chipmunks, white-tailed deer, black bears, grouse, and other birds. And after absorbing life from the soil for its whole living existence, it now releases all those nutrients back into that same soil to feed all manner of living things. Insects, algae, fungus, as well as all the other beech trees around it. Trees from its own seedlings that it created over its lifetime. Life and death equals life and death and so on. I'm MB Moose Lover. Thanks for watching.